Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, May 16th, 2023 City of Cheyenne Public Services Committee meeting. Uh, we have a relatively short agenda today, but um, anyway, just you all know the reminders, just if you have a, a phone or uh, any other device, please either shut it off or uh, mute it during the meeting. Um, also, for those of you online, please uh, mute yourselves when you're not speaking. It uh, just makes it easier for everyone else uh, in attendance. If you do plan on uh, speaking about an item today, please go up to the podium, uh, activate the microphone much like I did, uh, make the red light come on and identify yourself. That way uh, the clerk is able to uh, follow back up with you and, and uh, achieve accuracy in the meeting minutes as well. Um, one last reminder, just any public comment uh, in this meeting, uh, in committee meetings, should be related to items on uh, that particular agenda. Uh, there are opportunities for public comment uh, about other items at the city council meetings, and the next one is this coming Monday. So uh, with that, um, we have a full house of uh, committee members, so we're ready to go. Madam Clerk. Number 14, ordinance, second reading. Ordinance amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from MR, medium density residential, to MUB, mixed use business emphasis for land located at lot 29, block one, Eastridge. Mr. Lloyd. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Seth Lloyd. I'm with the City of Cheyenne Planning and Development Department. Um, the proposal in front of you is to change a parcel along Pershing near the roundabout from MR, medium density residential, to MUB, mixed use business emphasis. Um, this proposal um, was initiated by the property owner, and the um, eventual objective is to allow the expansion of a commercial use to that property. Um, the current use of the property is a single family home residence. Single family homes are also allowed in the MUB zone as a use by right. So should this um, proposal that the applicant currently has not go forward, there are other options, um, including the retention of single family home development or redevelopment on that parcel. The um, surrounding area is um, residential to the north and west, uh, but is largely commercial to the south. Um, the Plan Cheyenne suggests that the area, the specific parcel be designated urban residential, but does designate the area with um, uh, some commercial designations. And Plan Cheyenne also does encourage flexibility to respond to market demands and the conversion of homes along arterials to commercial uses. Um, due to these elements of Plan Cheyenne, staff's analysis is that this application meets the um, that review criterion. Um, and also MUB zoning is the adjacent zoning to the east and also the zoning across Pershing to the south. Um, the MUB zoning would also allow for redevelopment of this parcel, would encourage redevelopment of this parcel to locate their building closer to Pershing and put parking in the rear should the um, parcel ever be uh, redeveloped and the building, existing building be demolished. Um, and that would remove accesses off of Pershing. Um, so due to meeting all the review criteria of the Unified Development Code, um, staff recommends approval of this item. And at their May 1st Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission recommended approval of this item by a vote of five to one. Um, I'm available for any questions. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, stand by for questions. Dr. Rooney, go ahead. And I'm maybe my colleagues have the same question, but if if that is um made commercial a commercial entity and i as you said access off pershing would then be closed i presume then access would be through the alley to the north of the lot is that or do they have an easement through the parking lot to their east the property owner it's my understanding this property owner and the property owner next door um, are the same property only at this time. Um, so they could utilize uh, an arrangement to use that parking lot for this parcel. Um, so they could use that existing parking, depending on exactly how that arrangement ends up working out. They could also access off the alley and put parking in the back um, for uh, a more minor type use, but that would be an option available to them as well. And Mr. Chairman, if I may, and under MUB, what businesses would be permitted there? 
Um, Mr. Chair, through you, um, there is a certain limitation in scope just because of the size of the parcel, but we would expect to see businesses such as salons, offices, um, retail, uh, possibly a small food establishment. Those types of uses are all allowed in the MUB zone, along with multifamily or single family. So that could be converted to an apartment building. You, know, you could have a small apartment building there as well as a single family home. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, any additional questions? Uh, Mr. Seagrave, go ahead. Yes, sir. Through you. Have we had any uh, <clears throat> response to this proposal from the neighborhood? neighbors we have so um we have received public comment from neighbors in the area um they were concerned about the commercial use and concerned about the alley being used as an access way um there was some discussion about the different types of uses that are allowed in the MUB zone and whether or not the traffic demands would require upgrades to the alley um there was some concern about uh, zoning creep, as it were, where this parcel goes and the next parcel goes and the next parcel goes. Um, based on the uh, regulations in Plan Cheyenne, staff isn't, uh, the recommendations, I should say, the recommendations in Plan Cheyenne, staff isn't as concerned about the zoning creep because Plan Cheyenne does recommend that homes along arterials be converted away from single family residential uses. So if multiple homes along there all developed with say multifamily or offices, um, that necessarily wouldn't necessarily be detrimental to the community based on Plan Cheyenne's recommendation. However, the individual neighbors or neighborhood, um, they're, they're obviously concerned about the item. Mr. Chair, go ahead. How, how many people have we heard from? Um, I don't remember an exact count. Um, no one had contacted staff directly, but we did have some people turn out at the Planning Commission meeting. Um, I don't know if everyone who showed up at the planning commission meeting talked, you know, spoke and made public comment, but I want to say we had at least four different individuals there. And we also had a, the owner themselves there at the planning commission meeting that came up and spoke. Um, so we had, you know, a, a decent, a decent turnout, but I don't remember the exact number. I'm apologize. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Um, developers report. Mr. Hansen. Good afternoon, Shane Hansen, Style Surveying Services, agent for the owner. <clears throat> I can clarify some of those questions that you guys had. Access will be from the parking lot, which has access directly to East Pershing. If he's talking about, when Seth was talking about closing off the access, he's talking about closing off the access to the house. The house will be used for an office. This is intended to be a rental unit for a, a rental office for handicap accessible vehicles, which was what the parking lot would be used for. Um, there's the access goes from not worried about having access to the house and the parking lot. Same owner owns both parcels. She can use that as an office and have her rental vehicles parked next door on the property that she owns that has a parking lot on it. Without taking any questions. If there aren't any questions from the committee, um, I, the chair does have a, mm -hmm. I did recognize the name, Mr. Hanson, so I'm assuming that's the same owner uh, as uh, Frontier Access and Mobility. That's correct. So, uh, yes, and so that would be, yes, because they do sell and rent vehicles, I think, out of their out of their current place by by the old Hoys now, so that, so they would be moving that. It's an expansion of her current there. business to move the rental to her property on the corner of Converse and Pershing. Um, in a follow-up, if if the committee is okay, um, Mr. Hampton, I I was curious. So so the primary access would be intended to be anyway the the front of the I guess the the front of the parking lot facing um, Pershing. There's a yes, that's correct. There's a there's an access to the parking lot from Pershing. Traffic currently flows west on Pershing, turns into the parking lot. Then it can either flow to the to west on down the alleyway, or it can go back out to the east to Converse on the alleyway. So yes, and and I was and I was sort of concerned with, uh, and I was wondering about the access they, on the alleyway coming yeah. right as you're getting into the uh, to the roundabout. Also, the parking lot has enough space that it, you can you can circle around in the parking lot and go back out to Pershing. Um, any further questions uh, for Mr. Hansen um, before we go to public comment? Go ahead. Well, I understand that uh, 
this isn't the traffic, uh, you aren't the traffic department, but so would this be a turn in and turn out right hand turn into that? And I mean, obviously if you're gonna try to turn left at that particular spot, it would be quite quite challenging. It's a right currently right now. So it, it's it's a two way access. You can come into the right. You can go back out to the left. You can go back out to the right. Either way you want to. It's it's currently. It's not changing the flow of current traffic. It's simply not. It's the same. You can see the, the ac access points right there. Mm -hmm. And you would not be able to turn left into it because there's an island there. You have to come in from the right. Okay, and you can go, and you wouldn't go back out. To, you could go back out to the left, I guess, but you probably you wouldn't because you have to go down to the other end of the island. So all traffic would flow west out of it, and then you can go out to if it wants to go out of the west to the alleyway, they can do that. They can come in from the east, come back out through the west. Picture is very helpful. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Through you, Mr. Chairman, Michael White. Uh, I attended the planning commission meeting, and my recollection there were six people that uh, in the neighborhood that voiced concerns. Um, a couple voiced concerns about the reason they moved there was because it's always been a residential area. Uh, another lady brought up the noise issue with uh, the food trucks. There's two food trucks currently next door into that parking lot. Mr. Terrell brought up the access on uh, the only access that there is now. One of the other planning commission people, which I can't remember his name, said we should be diligent when we approve these, but he still, there was a five to one vote uh, for the project. So I would just have a concern, and I mentioned it about why there wouldn't be a traffic study. So that would be my last comment. Thank you. If I may, there was actually two people that spoke. There was actually, okay, three people that spoke and the owner spoke. So there's two, two people in opposition, Mr. White spoke and the owner spoke. Um, and we do have, thank you. Uh, we do have uh, engineer Cobb and I'm going to allow Mr. Cobb to speak if that's okay. Did you have a response? Go ahead. Um, I'd like to go ahead and let Mr. Cobb, if you can, uh, shed some light on this for us. Mr. Cobb. Chairman, through, through you to, to the committee, I just wanted this group to know, and I was not at the Planning Commission on this particular item, but we have modifications planned for this roundabout that are coming up, not this summer, but next summer, which will include an extension of this island out. So we this is on the west side. So on Pershing itself, that would preclude a left movement out of this facility in the future, including both houses. So um, it, it's, it will change in character as we move forward. I just wanted to make sure that we all understood that and it was on the table. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Stand by if you would, please. I, I would anticipate maybe additional questions. Mr. Lloyd. Mr. Chair, Seth Lloyd of the Planning Development Department again. I just want to bring a couple of clarifications to the item on the agenda. Um, typically, with a zoning map amendment, we don't require traffic or drainage analyses because we don't know specifically what uses will come eventually. Um, we do have a specific proposal. Uh, we do have um, uh, the applicant has a specific idea in mind as far as, as far as the future use, but should the applicant say die tomorrow and somebody else wants to purchase the property, we have to take into consideration that this could become a fast food restaurant or a law office or something else. So when we're talking about the zoning map amendment, we don't usually require a traffic study because it could be a really low usage commercial use or it could be a really high usage commercial use. And that's really dependent on what that specific proposal ends up being. Um, the property in question is 2236. I've highlighted on the screen. It does have a driveway on Pershing right now. Should this property redevelop, we would be closing that driveway. The parking lot next door is not involved on the zone change and is actually a separate parcel at this time. So at that access is not proposed to be, wouldn't be modified necessarily by the development of this parcel. Um, this parcel and this parcel are currently owned by the same owners, so they could combine them and create one development out of that. 
or this parcel could develop independently of that parking lot, in which case parking would have to come from the rear from the alley. Um, so I, I, I want to, it's kind of convoluted because they couldn't certainly could and probably should develop together, but they, that's not necessarily required at this time. So it's trying to cover all of our bases as to what could happen here, but also recognize what is proposed to happen here at the same time. Um, so if there's any follow-up questions for me, I'm available for any follow-up questions, but I thought I'd add some clarification so that everyone was on the same page. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and open it, open it back up for public comment. Um, are there any further public comment here in the room or online? Any raised hands? I just see that Tom Cobb has his hand still raised, and I'm not sure if that was an accident or if he has more to add. My like apologies, he... accident. Sorry. Um, no, that we just thought we'd ask. Um, thank you. Um, are there any further questions or comments from the committee? Um, uh, any questions for Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Cobb? Just wanted to give you gentlemen the opportunity to ask questions of them if, if you'd like. Seeing and hearing none and uh, seeing and hearing no uh, further public comment, the chair would entertain a motion. Moved by Mr. Seagrave, seconded by Dr. Rennie. Further questions or comments from the committee? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Uh, the recommendation for next Monday City Council meeting will be for approval of this ordinance on second reading. Next item, please. Number 15, ordinance second reading, amending the major street plan official map 2017 by updating the entire major street plan official map with newly platted and built roads and with the most recent master transportation plan connect 2045 and other recently adopted master transportation amendments. Mr. Mason, go ahead. Chairman, committee, Tom Mason, director of the Cheyenne MPO. We're presenting to you a um, updated City of Cheyenne major street plan official map. What we, state statutes allows um, after a master transportation plan has been adopted that the city can adopt an, an official map. And what we do um, is overlay the master transportation plan that was adopted um, in December of 2020. It was called Connect 2045. So the master transportation plan from that, and um, since then we have um, brought through the city governing body two amendments. One was with re resolution 6217 that was approved on March 14th of, of last year. And then a second amendment, resolution 6277 that was approved on October 24th of 2022. So um, the master transportation plan and those amendments are basically laid over the um, platted streets of the, of the Cheyenne urban area. And then, <clears throat> Um, there have been a few cases in the past where we have, um, where we don't have existing plats, but we wanted to do in a, a centerline survey of future roads. Uh, for instance, they're shown on uh, this official map, Story Boulevard and Van Buren in that section of property north of Del Range and uh, between College Drive and Whitney Road. That's one example. Another was the uh, plan for the future improvements for the Dale Range and US 30. The new intersection with uh, US 30 that's planned and the service roads that go eastward to Christensen Road. Those are examples of roads that we have um, surveyed that extension of those roadways and adopted those centerline surveys by 
ordinance. And so they're now also placed on this um, overall official map amendment. We held a uh, public hearing on May 1st. It was advertised a month earlier on uh, April 1st. And there, there were no uh, comments um, from the public received at that public hearing at the City Planning Commission. And the Planning Commission recommended the official maps um, adoption by this ordinance. I will answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Um, any questions, comments uh, for Mr. Mason? Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Seagrave, through you. Help me understand the purpose of this. This isn't trying to, isn't trying to list all of the anticipated changes for the next 25 years, is it? Mr. Chairman, the purpose of the official map is to um, take the master transportation plan because there may be some instances where the functional classification that's proposed to be um, for 25 years out, you know, because we may like want to have the additional right of way. We may have only um, existing and platted. 80 feet of right away, for instance, but the master plan says, no, that sh should not be a collector in the future. It should be a, a minor arterial, which the standards for that is 100 feet of right away. So it points out to the city that we need to do what we can as plats take place, that we need to try and get additional right away to handle the future traffic that's going to be coming. Um, by doing also, by doing the centerline surveys for where there currently is not a plat, like the examples I gave, Story and Van Buren, for instance, um, it shows what the uh, functional classification of those roads should be. Um, and it state statutes um, spells out that what we're doing the city by adopting these future roads and alignments is that you're protecting the integrity of the master plan. Meaning it's very important for us to have those future extensions. So if they're just, if they're not shown only on the plat, but we do individual road surveys and file those center lines with the county clerk, the city's protecting those alignments. So a developer can't just go in there and build houses where we want a road. So it's protecting the official map. It's protecting the master plan so that we get those future road extensions. Now, for instance, so that story in Van Buren alignment, they were um, surveyed and filed with the clerk after the adoption by the city governing body. But the developer is going to, we already know that the developer is gonna shift the road. You know, they have a different idea where they want to lay that road. Well, if they came in here and told the city with a plat that they were just gonna build houses and they were, weren't gonna build that road on that general alignment, then the city has some authority to say, sorry, can't do that. We've adopted this alignment and we're gonna get this road. We're gonna protect that master plan. Um, but if they're going to build it by shifting it a little bit, but they're still basically doing the east-west road or the north-south road, we're getting what we want for the master plan. We'll, we'll agree to that. Um, we'll recommend that still move, move forward. But when they're done with their, uh, they've done their own planning, their own design, they've come up with a new alignment, then it comes to the governing body for uh, them to approve that um, plat. And as long as it's basically meeting the intention of the master plan, then we're probably all gonna agree to it and let that move forward. Mr. Chair, one follow-up. Go ahead, Mr. Seagrave, thank you. 
So this does not direct the city to go out and necessarily purchase those rights of way. It's simply protecting them from future development. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's exactly correct. And even state statute says it does not constitute the city going out and buying that right away. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions from the committee for Mr. Mason? Public comment. Uh, Michael White through you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yep. I happen to live out there in that area. Um, Currently, the uh, map from um, Island Road to Whitney Road is not a road at this time. The property owner is the Geisel Whitney LLC company. So to go back to Mr. Seagrave's point, the only way that road can be built is somebody pays the owner for the property for the owner and the city to allow that. Currently, the Guardian Company that is in the development stage, along with AVI Engineering, does not own that property. Um, so I have a concern with number one. I realize what Mr. Mason has said about the official map, but the road currently from North College to Whitney, where the road is no longer there, this is county roads and no road. So my question would be, and I agreed with Mr. Cobb not to mention this until it got to council, but you would have to ask staff with him on what he plans on doing to acquire, acquire that right-of-way property from the Whitney LLC company. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think those are all valid points, but I mean, certainly we're at the point where we are um, technically just talking about, um, at least unless I'm mistaken, um, we are talking about approving a, a plan, um, but uh, those points are, are duly noted. I know I've, I've spoken to Mr. White on several occasions about his concerns with that. Um, so we will definitely have to stay diligent about that moving forward. Um, any further public comment here in the room or do we have any raised hands? All right. Um, Chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Mr. Seagrave, seconded by Mr. Laybourne. Um, further questions, comments, concerns from the committee? All right. Seeing and hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Um, the recommendation for next Monday night's uh, meeting will be for um, approval of this ordinance on second reading. Last item, please. Number 19, resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to sign a final plat for stadium view edition fourth filing, a replat of lots eight and nine, block four, stadium view edition third filing, city of Cheyenne, Laramie County, Wyoming, located northeast of the intersection of Bevins Street and Grove Drive. Mr. Lloyd, staff report, please. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Seth Lloyd. I'm with the City of Shine Planning and Development Department. Um, this proposed plat is in the MR zone district in an urban residential area designated by Plan Cheyenne. And the proposal is to divide the land for um, development for residential use, um, specifically duplexes on lots one and two, with lot three remaining as a single family home. There's currently a single family home on that property. Um, the um, plat is pretty minor in nature. It creates three lots, does not propose any streets or alleys, um, doesn't really have any opportunities to create new streets or alleys to shrink blocks. So um, there's a giant block that this is part of that includes the golf course and a county parcel to the north, but this parcel doesn't really can't really affect that block. Um, so we, staff does recommend an exception to block size for this plat. Um, the planning commission recommended approval of this plat with that exception, um, and staff recommends approval with no conditions. Um, I do want to make one note, and that is that, um, oftentimes lots of this 
I mean, plats of this nature can be taken care of administratively, but the Unified Development Code says that the lots created need to match the neighborhood and the plat here creates smaller lots than are found in the rest of the neighborhood. Um, a similar situation happened up at Hilltop and Bluff, if any of you remember that um, situation there. They had a large, large lot split it into three lots with an existing single family home, but wanted two smaller lots instead of one larger lot, which was not consistent with the lots currently in the neighborhood. Um, similar situation here, um, but the I would note that there are also multiple duplexes in this neighborhood. They're just two units on one lot instead of two units on two lots. Um, so that's the big difference here is we're actually creating two lot units on two lots instead of two units on one lot. Um, with that, I'm available for any questions on this item. Uh, any question? Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Any questions for Mr. Lloyd? Mr. Seagrave, go ahead. What's the uh, what's the property directly north towards Rolland Street? It looks like it's zoned in. Yeah. That parcel, if I remember correctly, is outside of city limits um, in the county. It's a rural residential style home. Um, at some point, I would think that we would annex it with our county pockets annexation, and possibly it could redevelop. Um, at that point, but uh, being in the county right now, it wouldn't be able to be any smaller. Thank you. Further questions? Uh, go ahead, Dr. Rennie. Mr. Chairman, I'd like, uh, when I figured it, these lots, the two new lots come up to be about 3,500 square feet. Is that an accurate estimate? Mr. Lloyd? Um, Mr. Lloyd was not, you were nodding yes. So. Yeah, it, it's it's somewhere around 3,000 to 3,500 square feet. Yeah, okay. And and obviously most of the lots in that neighborhood are twice that size. So, and what kind of average in other parts of the city, what are, what is our standard lot size? Um, so these lots meet the standards for the in the Unified Development Code for new lots. There's no variances or other relief necessary to create these lots in, of this size in this zone district. Um, there are definitely lots all around the community of this size, maybe not of this shape. Usually they're a little bit narrower and a little bit deeper um, when we're talking about duplex lots. But um, for example, a lot of lots in the Saddle Ridge area are closer to this size um, the new duplexes that are going in there. Lots in South Park Estates would be similar in size to this development. And of course, we have a smattering of lots all throughout the older sections of towns that are uh, a whole variety of sizes. So they would definitely be consistent with sizes such as that in the community. So for an example, on the item 14, the lot that we were talking about converting from MUR to MUB, do we know what size that was? Do we have an estimate on that? Just Kind of so I can picture it. Um, no, you can let me no, know. I I can pull that up real pretty quick though, so I can I can grab that and get. Uh, and I think that the acreage is on the staff report for that lot, but I don't. I, I looked but missed it then. And 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 maybe I didn't put it in. I, it's it. Well, you can let me can you can let me know later. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. So the sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, to answer Dr. Rennie's question. Um, the lot that we just had with the zoning map amendment is 8,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That answers my questions. All right. Any further questions for Mr. Lloyd from the committee? Uh, do we have a developer's report? Good afternoon. Shane Hansen, Style Surveying Services, agent for the owner. <clears throat> Basically, we're taking a vacant lot that's been un, that hasn't had development on it for many, many years, right next to the Prairie View Golf Course, splitting it in half and putting a duplex on it. We're running the sewer and water along the eight-foot easement that we put a brand new easement across the back of the lots to accommodate sewer and water to come from, I believe it's Bevins to the south. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. I very well. I very well might have bounced the golf ball off of this particular property yesterday. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna guess so. I think there's a, there's a good chance. <laughs> um, any any questions for uh, <laughs> any questions uh, for uh, Mr. Hanson from the uh, committee? 
Go ahead, Mr. Dr. Chair. So then, Mr. Hansen, the proposal is for like a twin home instead of duplex. Sure, Mr. Chair, through you. Yes, sir. That's correct. All right. Thank you. Further public comment. Um, and Mr. Bloom, you had gotten up and come to the podium. I wasn't sure if, if you had comments as well. No, we're good. Okay. Go ahead. All right. I think it's on. Um, my, my name is Patrick Rudd. I'm the owner. I just wanted to be present. And if there's any questions you had about it, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. We're glad you're here. We appreciate that. Are there any questions for uh, Mr. Rudd? Thank you. Uh, do we have any hands raised online? Okay. Uh, any further public comment here in the room? All right. Seeing and hearing none, the chair would entertain a motion. Uh, moved by Mr. Laybourne, seconded by Mr. Seagrave. Uh, any further questions or comments from the committee? Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Seagrave. Very briefly. In a perfect world, I'd love to see a single family home on here to match the ones adjoining it. But it's not a perfect world, and infill sometimes requires um, changes, and a lot of times a, a twin home on a lot like this will will make it develop. So I'm in support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, further comments from the committee, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Rennie. I'd like to echo my colleague from Ward 2's comments. I initially was opposed to this. Um, Mr. Lloyd had referenced that he subdivision of lots at Bluff and Hilltop, and those were like postage stamp size. And yeah. You can't even get a full size trailer on those lots. Um, and they haven't developed yet. And I think some of it's because they're so small. But, um, and thinking this was going to be two single residences, I thought it had the same conclusion, but I feel a little better about it being a duplex or a twin home. So I probably, for the same reasons that the Councilman Seagrave brought up, I will support it. Thank you. Um, one last chance. Okay. So you're hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, the recommendation um, for next Monday's City Council meeting will be for adoption of this resolution. And seeing as we have no other business on the agenda today, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you, everybody.